this is the left moccasin for a pair I made for my granddaughter not too long ago and her foot is growing so I'm going to make her a new pair and she has told me that she wants a pair with fringe um, which of course will look uh, very much like a Native American moccasin but at the end of this video I'll show you how many variations how many different ways you can make the top line to make these shoes um, look much more contemporary if that's what you'd like so I drew this outline of her foot with her standing on this uh, folder and held the pencil straight up and down and there it is I've done quite a lot with this pattern. I took her sole pattern and uh, drew around it on another piece of file folder. And I smoothed out the area around her toes, because of course you don't want those bumps. Then I found, I drew a line where it seems like the widest part of her foot is, across the ball of the foot. And I measured around her foot. I used a a tape measure here but um, you can take a string and bring it around her foot and then lay that next to a ruler. I got that across her sole it's three inches and around her foot it's eight inches at that point. So then I drew that line and um, to draw that line I drew a line that seemed to be down the middle of the sole it's a little hard because the sole is so irregularly shaped, but I think that's about it. And then I drew another line perpendicular to that line right at the bottom of the pattern, right at the bottom of the sole. And I drew the halfway line, which you can just measure and get that, or fold your pattern in two and get it. Then I also added this line and this line. The outside of the foot and the inside of the foot. From the widest part of the foot I drew straight down to that horizontal line and also on the inside of the foot. Here you see that I've taken this pattern and made a much bigger pattern. So this is a side seam pattern. Right here is the seam that you don't stitch and out here is the seam that you do stitch. So let's figure this out. What I did first was draw a line vertically on the file folder and um, an inch and a half or so from the bottom edge I drew a line perpendicular to that line. This gave me a little niche that I can copy this pattern in. And um, it's important that I remember about um, the widest part of the foot line. But there is some math that needs to be done. So this is three inches across. And when I flip this pattern over, this is three inches across. But her foot is eight inches around. So that means I need to add sides to this moccasin. If I've got three inches across the sole here and the same here, and it's eight inches around, this is really easy. I just add an inch. So what? So I drew that center line and the baseline, and then I measured over an inch and added the inch to the inside of the moccasin. And I need to do the same thing all around it. So I, when I drew that um, line one inch over, then I flipped this over and put it in place right uh, between the vertical and horizontal lines. So now what's left to do is to add an inch around the rest of this underfoot part where all the... Um, gathering is going to take place because it's going to be so much bigger than the one over the top of the foot. So I added an inch down here below 
that vertical line and then I use my compass to go around here with one inch and meet up with this line to finish the pattern there's two more areas to work with. One is the top line. So this is my halfway line and I'm making a T opening on this moccasin. Um, so I found the halfway line, the um, center of the halfway line and drew a line down to the bottom of the pattern. And then I thought a quarter, a three-quarter inch would be good on each side for opening. So I made those marks so that the pattern then will have this T-shape. So I've cut it out and now I've um, used the compass set at three-sixteenths of an inch, which is the distance that I like stitch holes to be from the edge and so from this widest part of the foot line I drew around here on down here to that widest part on the other side and did the same on the overfoot part of the moccasin. All the way now on this side I went all the way down to the very end. Now the stitch marks for right now are just going to go on the overfoot part and they're going to be um, a quarter of an inch apart. I think that's a good distance um, so that the gathers are not too small or too big. So I'm marking off a quarter of an inch. And I will continue with that in the tape measure um, all the way around this edge until I get down to this point. I have punched holes out around the toe area and down this side of the overfoot part. I used this uh, zero zero hand punch, which you can get from most leather stores. And I always put this a piece of some similar material under where I'm punching so that the, pun the punch goes all the way through the piece that's on the top. You can also use a zero zero drive punch, which you would need something to put under. Here's a, a chunk of log that I like to use. and. Um, and then you would need a mallet or a hammer or something to hit this drive punch with. So now I've got these holes made and I needed to transfer those holes over here so they'd be the same. So to do that I just made a little pattern that I copied the stitch holes and then flipped, flipped it over and put it over here and drew the new stitch marks. So now to finish this pattern I need to put stitch marks around the edge of this section. To place the stitch marks for the underfoot part. So I put a few in place so you could see them well. Um, what I'm doing is I have copied what the stitch holes here, I've copied them here, and now I'm um, just making radiating lines all around. So here I have two points and I'm going to eyeball what I think is the point in between and then uh, I'll get a sense of how everything looks. So um, I did this one radiating. Then I could find this halfway point here for that one and that one. 
So I'll finish doing this and then I'll look at them and see if everything looks like it's uh, spaced as best as possible. Here's my completed pattern. The top line has been cut here and I have uh, radiated all the stitch marks and punched out holes. I have used my pattern to cut out the felt mock-up. I cut it out using a rotary cutter but you can also uh, draw around it and then cut it out with scissors and I used uh, a marker to show where each of these stitch marks are. I do need stitch marks over here so what I did was just uh, make a line of, of the um, widest part and matched it up here and then copied these stitch marks so that they would be exactly the same and I didn't need to punch them out on this side. I'm going to pull these stitches tighter in just a moment. So that I start making little gathers. Just used a, a regular sharp pointed needle. So I'm so I'm starting to form gathers here that you can see. So I'm going to continue until I get back to the widest part mark on the other side. Now I've stitched the toe area and those gathers look pretty consistent. Of course they're greater in the toe area. It's necessary because uh, the stitches have to be further apart on the underfoot section. So now I'm going to just stitch down this side. I didn't actually have to make these stitch marks. I can just whip stitch um, down to this point. And you might put a pin down here just to uh, make sure that it ends up matching uh, if you don't follow the stitch marks. One of the possible top lines this is um, the best one for making a fringe moccasin, but especially uh, at the end of this video, I'll show you some of the variety of ways that you can change the look of the shoe using a different top line. Here I have the moccasin sewn down the side. The only thing left to do is to create the back of the heel. I'm trying this mock-up on my grandchild to figure out where the heel seam goes. Since we had a little extra back here, about an, an inch um, on the pattern, and I see that, um, mark this, that's about where I need to clip it off to make the customized heel seam. This is the pattern that I used to cut out the uh, felt mock-up. It has the stitches for the toe area and down the one side that gets stitched, but it doesn't have stitches for the heel area. We had to wait to do that because um, I tried the moccasin on my granddaughter and found uh, when I clipped it that about uh, three-eighths of an inch needed to be cut off. It was a little less than um, a quarter, a half inch. So now this is ex exactly where the heel seam should go. 
and right here is going to be where that little rectangle, where there's going to be a rectangle at the bottom. So to form that rectangle and make stitching holes for it, I cut a strip of paper that fits between these two lines and folded it into quarters. So I've got four sections here now and I lay that down and uh, first of all I'm going to make a mark of how high that these are and I lay that down and uh, first of all I'm going to make a mark of how high that these are so I'll just make a couple of marks to help me make a line I'll use this little Hindu ruler and make this line and now this space below it I want to divide into quarters so I going to copy where those lines are and I'll mark them at the bottom also so I will draw in these lines The center one I'm just going to make small and then big one here. So this is the spacing for the back of the heel. Now this piece here is going to be the rectangle that folds up and so it needs stitch marks and um, keep in mind that this is the top edge right here and then these will be the sides of that rectangle. So I have to figure out how many stitch marks to put in that area and I like them to be about a quarter of an inch apart so depending upon what size moccasin you're making you might fit three or four or five uh, between the center line and that edge. Uh, since this is a small moccasin I'm going to put three so one there, one here, and one there. And since these have pretty much the same shape, I'm gonna make three here too. So that's one and two, three. I'll do the same over here. Kind of this middle one bringing in a little bit further than seems equal because um, I don't want too much space between those two center ones. So I've got six marks, three on each side of that center line. And now um, up and down, since this should be quite similar, I put, so I'm going to mark where the side is and where the top is. So the side over here and the top here. Then I'm going to duplicate these three and three. So I put three along here, along the side, and three across the top. Unless you're really good at spatial thinking, it might be confusing, but um, I'll show you how this folds up. Stitch holes also need to be punched along the heel seam above the rectangle. I am going to mark these off in quarter inch increments. And to start, I center my ruler um, at one eighth inch on each side so that I'm starting very close to the top. And then I continue with quarter inch increments from this center of the pattern to, to down where the rectangle will cover the body um, I have 10 
I have 10 stitch marks here. On the other side, I have six. Fortunately, the other four are here. So when, uh, when this pattern gets stitched to this pattern, when this side gets stitched to that side, um, I will have the 10 that I need. Now that I've made a pattern for the base of the heel, so I know where those slits belong, I'm going to stitch the back of the heel. So I, I'm just going to use the whip stitch. If I wanted something more substantial, like on the actual leather moccasin, I would whip up one direction and whip down in the other. So I'll continue with this stitching and then stitch the base of the heel. So I've got my three stitches this direction, six across the top and three down the side here. So I'm um, just going in and out, stitching this in place. If you plan to put a cord around the top line of this moccasin, um, you want to have the correct number of uh, holes along the side for the cord to go through. Um, I had originally done one, two, three, four, five holes, and that results in the cord at the back of the heel being inside the moccasin, and of course, nobody's going to like to have that rubbing against their heel. One here, just make one lined up there, one near the back of the heel. Another one not far from that uh, first one, and then divide the rest of the space into thirds. And that will give you one, two, three, four, five, six holes. And that means that um, this part will go outside of the moccasin and will just draw it in so it feels nice and secure at the heel. Another thing is that sometimes moccasins are a little uh, baggy along the sides. So you can, uh, on your, if you notice that your mock-up is kind of baggy, um, you can cut out a piece from the bottom. Um, so I'm going to cut out along that, that line. Um, it's the center of this curve is a little below the uh, halfway mark of the moccasin uh, and uh, comes to a point at both ends and then just whip, the, whip stitch this together. So when you're making the actual shoe, you would do this um, before you put any soling on. Do the soling the same way that you would ordinarily, so this doesn't affect that. I cut it out, and then we'll stitch it closed. The mock-up is finished, so I can try this on my granddaughter and see if any alterations need to be made. Maybe it's a little wide or, or narrow in one area and keep working on it until you adding pieces or taking bits away till you get it to fit just right. And um, here at the back of the heel I did the whip stitch up and then back down again so it makes a cross stitch and then I stitched this tab in place using the um, stitch marks that we made earlier. Finally, I'm getting around to cutting into leather and making the actual moccasin. I keep saying leather, but of course this can be felted wool coats or 
uh, heavy fabric. But in this case, I'm making a leather moccasin. There's two ways that I can cut this out. Either use a rotary cutter. Of course, I would have to have it on um, a surface underneath the leather that um, wouldn't dull the blade. So I won't demonstrate it here. Or, of course, you can draw around it and cut it out with scissors. And then there's the stitch marks. And um, so these have been punched out and I like to use a little micron pen to mark all those locations for the stitches. Uh, but any fine point um, marker would work well or whatever you have. So I'll be cutting this out, punching out all the holes, and then before long, ready for stitching. Now I'm making the pattern for the bottom sole. So I want these moccasins to last longer, so I'm putting an inner tube sole here. Uh, to make the pattern, I take this sole pattern and draw around it, and then with the compass, add three-eighths of an inch, or just by measuring three-eighths inch around. Uh, I want the stitches not to be on, this would be on the ground, so I want them raised up a little bit, so I'm raising them up three-eighths inches, and I pretty much use that for uh, all sizes, but you can add more if you like for bigger sizes. And in fact, the easiest way to, to do this is to make a sole that's uh, the same size as this underfoot part. Uh, it has to be, I don't think there's a, a tires that are quite wide enough to do that, but uh, you can use uh, natural rubber or whatever flexible material you think of. So I used this pattern to cut this piece out, and then I also drew around it here so I would know where to place it. I've cut out the bottom sole and drew a line of where it will be placed. And now I will cement it with contact cement. Contact cement works if you apply it on both surfaces that are going to be adhered. So I need to apply it on here and then here, and then wait until it dries, which might take 10 minutes or so, depending upon the weather and your material. So I've put this um, non-toxic cement, which is Aqualim 315 from Springfield Leather. And I put it in the best quality uh, condiment bottle that I can find because I have had I have used a cheaper one and the, the lid blew off one time when I was um, putting the cement on. So you can imagine what a mess that was. So I'll use this little brush. Uh, it's called an acid brush that um, is very inexpensive, but you can still wash them and reuse them. So I'll spread this. Don't have to go all the way to the line. The cement has dried on both of these surfaces, so I'm going to very carefully line this up. Okay. 
I'll show you how to make the two needle running stitch. I'm going to use a piece of light colored waxed braided thread just so you can see what I'm doing and then I'll take it out and stitch the area with black thread. Um, it's handy to know about how to keep this thread on your needle. You can um, pierce it, pierce the thread with the needle, then pull it through and kind of click it in place and it's going to stay on there. So I'll start in this hole and I'll take a needle down through the next hole and then I'll go up through that same hole, holding this thread that's already in the hole over to the side. That's very important because um, if you pierce the thread, then you're going to have a hard time making the next stitch. And also I, I need to, uh, before I go too far, to straighten out, equalize the, the lengths of these two threads. So I'll continue like that, one thread down, the other one up, while you're holding the one that's already in the hole, over to the side. And then giving a good tug each time on both threads. I've stitched the inner tube soling on and I'm ready to stitch the moccasin together. And you notice that I've cut out this T shape for the top line for making a fringed moccasin. So I'm starting to stitch in this corner. Mm -hmm. I've got a thread that's about three times the length of the area I'm stitching and I'm back to the whip stitch so I made a knot on the inside here I don't think it could be felt uh, if you are concerned about that you can pound the knot a bit so it doesn't stick up at all and so just in and out With Millie's moccasin, I, she wants um, all these two flaps, these edges, to be turned down. So uh, cutting that T, we have a flap here that we're going to fold down and put fringe under and a flap here, but we need to add one here. So I've just punched the holes and we'll be stitching that and then ready to add the fringe. I've stitched this extra piece here, so I'll be folding it down with fringe coming out from under it, like I will these other two sides. Um, I started my whip stitching from the center just so I could deal with this uh, knot in the center instead of trying to deal with it at the side. So I went up here and then came back to finish the X's and then this way and back and and now I've tied my knot. Um, and you would use the same technique for any kind of uh, flap that you want to add in this direction. So I have this sample of a shoe that's a mo more like a moccasin. Uh, it's not a side seam, it has seam all around it. And, um, and this tongue has been stitched on so you can have any of course any shape that you want anything that you want to add um, here I've added some bead work um, so that could be 
one way that you deal with this top line is to add something here. You could even you know, cut these edges off. Um, lots of options. Here's my granddaughter's moccasin coming along. Um, I've cut out the fringe. I used some double-sided tape to hold it in place while I um, folded the top line over on both sides. And I have a three-prong um, thonging chisel, it's called, so it makes slits. and. I like that better than seeing round holes, but you can certainly use round holes and they will work just fine. So I've, I've uh, stitched this piece on the front so that I can have a uh, fringe there as well. I wanted to show you this um, three-prong thonging chisel. This is from Osborne. I would say the only type to get is one that's all one piece of metal. Anything that's has two pieces that the prongs are going to start uh, bending. And it's one eighth of an inch between each of these prongs, so it gets constant use from me on um, any kind of stitching for the upper part of the shoe, especially. I've used the thonging chisel to make slits all along here, so I'm doing that um, two needle running stitch down through the hole and then through the same slit um, and make and I, I'm holding this thread over to the side so that I don't split it because that's going to get you stuck and in a mess so and give uh, I gave it a good tug after I did that stitch Before I stitch the back of the heel, I need to put this cord through that will hold the moccasin tight around the top line. So I just took one of my needles and put a thread on it, made a little hole in the end of this, and uh, just thread it through. And then I'll tie it here at the front. So now that I have the toe and side stitched. I'm stitching the back of the heel and I'm starting at the base like I did on the mock-up um, and I put a knot at the end of the thread and left some thread beyond that knot so I can tie the two ends together when I get back here. So I'm going to which whip stitch up and whip stitch back just like um, I mentioned when you're making the mock-up. So I'll continue whip stitching to the top then turn around my stitches a tug each time. I've just about finished the heel seam. So you can see the X's that formed and so I'm taking this one last stitch and then I'm just going to turn this inside out and a stitch or a <coughs> tie these two ends together. And then I'll be stitching the re rectangular flap at the base. And winding these, or weaving these threads under a few stitches. I'm stitching this rectangle at the base of the heel seam. I've made a knot on the inside and then stitched 
with just a simple running stitch. And now I'm filling in the empty spaces. And when I get back to there, I will make a, a knot on the inside. And as usual, bring the threads under a few stitches and clip them off. Here I have a variety of mock-ups and shoes that show you some of the possibilities with the side seam pattern. Um, one is, this is from the standard side seam pattern, and uh, so I've added a strap and a more um, unique kind of uh, tab at the back of the heel. One of the things that you can do is to um, add a tab or a tongue here by stitching it on and you can also turn this down so that the um, design or color on the back side can show. Uh, here's an example of that on another shoe. Another shoe that's made with this T opening. Here's another one. This, of course, is not assembled. I, can't, I look forward to assembling it because I would love to be wearing these. Um, but this is made with the T, and so I stitched on this tongue and uh, kept this, these side pieces uh, upright and then tying it off with a piece of uh, inner tube. This shoe shows uh, a top line that comes to a point, which is really my favorite. And in this version, I added a different color piece. Uh, all of this is just experimentation, but it might be useful. This shoe was a pointed top line shoe, but I cut the sides off, filled in that little space, and then added a tie around the top by uh, punching holes all along the edge and just knotting them off there. Um, why not? Here you can see inside this shoe where some of the bagginess has been cut out by taking out a bit and restitching it. Here's a sweet little mock-up. I'm almost imagining having a tab across with Velcro fastening so that it's easy to get the little foot in there. Here are the final two moccasins that I'm going to show you in this video. The pink one is a mock that has no gathering around the toe. And how did I do that? Well, I added the same amount of side space for the above the foot part and the below the foot part. So since this is a children's shoe, I added a half an inch to each. And I'll be doing a video uh, just on making that kind of a moccasin. And the other one is a canvas moccasin made from a pair of uh, jeans that were not really sturdy but had too many holes for the wearer. So this turned out to look great, I thought. Uh, if you, so if you want to make your own surfer shoes, I'll be making a video of how to make these as well. Mm -hmm.